This training program is intended to give emergency responders the information they need to know about anhydrous ammonia. It consists of a short training video with more detailed information available under a series of headings if you wish to view it. This video will provide you with the information you need to know about anhydrous ammonia. The first priority in an emergency situation is to identify the product involved. This part of the training video will tell where you may encounter anhydrous ammonia. Anhydrous ammonia is manufactured in large chemical plants. It is used in large quantities as an agricultural fertilizer applied directly to the ground with specialized farming equipment. Ammonia is used as a refrigerant so it can be found in ice rinks, meat packing plants and cool stores. It is also used as a building block for a variety of other products, including glues, dyes, and household cleaners. Ammonia is a gas at room temperature and pressure. However, it is transported and used under pressure as a liquid. The tanks used to hold ammonia are pressure vessels and may include fixed storage tanks, rail cars, transport trucks, and tanks designed for agricultural use called nurse wagons. Ammonia may also be found in very large refrigerated tanks at industrial facilities and in gas cylinders in the refrigeration industry. In review, ammonia is widely used as a fertilizer in agriculture, in refrigeration, and it is also used as a building block for a variety of other products it is stored and transported as a liquid under pressure and may be found in both rural and urban locations. In any incident, you must be able to identify which product is involved and understand its basic properties to know how to safely respond. How do you know a vessel contains anhydrous ammonia? Anhydrous ammonia is regulated by the Transportation of Dangerous Goods Act and regulations. Under these TDG regulations, anhydrous ammonia's classification is Class 2.3, Subclass 8. The product identification number, or PIN, is 1005. All ammonia vessels must have the proper TDG placard so that anyone observing a vessel can quickly identify what that vessel contains. The words anhydrous ammonia, inhalation hazard, must also be found on the vessels. Tanks may also have wording such as caution ammonia or danger ammonia, depending on various provincial rules. The Emergency Response Guidebook provides information for first responders on initial actions to take in event of a spill of anhydrous ammonia. You should be familiar with how to use the ERG and the recommended actions. What are anhydrous ammonia's basic properties and characteristics? Ammonia has an extremely pungent odor and is easily detectable even at very low levels. This property provides an excellent warning and allows you to identify that ammonia gas is present in the air, even when you can't see it. Ammonia has an affinity towards water. Thus, it is extremely important to protect yourself as it will attack moisture areas such as your respiratory system, eyes, and skin. If anhydrous ammonia escapes from its containment, it turns immediately into a gas and blows with the wind as it dissipates. It may form a white plume or it may be invisible. You must act on the assumption that there is ammonia gas downwind of an incident. In review, Ammonia is regulated by the Transportation of Dangerous Goods Act and regulations, identified by white 1005 dangerous goods placards. Containers may also be marked as containing ammonia. Ammonia has an extremely pungent odor, and if released from its containment, will vaporize immediately and drift downwind. It is a serious inhalation hazard. Once you have identified the product involved in the accident, your next consideration must be to protect yourself from it. The primary hazard with ammonia is inhalation, so staying out of a cloud of gaseous ammonia is vital. In high concentrations, ammonia can be deadly. 
Ammonia is caustic in nature and will produce chemical burns to the eyes, lungs, and skin. This type of burn is susceptible to an infection. Remember that a cloud of ammonia gas that has escaped from its containment may not be visible and will drift downwind as it dissipates. You may inhale ammonia and become a casualty if you approach the incident downwind. Anhydrous ammonia is considered toxic by inhalation, and the ERG provides a table of initial isolation and protective action distances. Refer to this information to determine the distances that are recommended to isolate and protect persons downwind. Please note that firefighter turnout gear or bunker suits is not adequate protection for an ammonia emergency. Turnout gear is made to breathe, so ammonia vapor or water contaminated with ammonia can pass through the suit and contact the skin, producing chemical burns. In high concentrations, or when levels of ammonia are unknown, fully encapsulated suits with self-contained air are required for safety. Rescue methods must be left to trained personnel equipped with the appropriate personal protective equipment. Ammonia burns must be treated with water. Continue to flush the burn with water to draw out all the ammonia. If a person has inhaled ammonia, it is essential to get emergency medical help since there could be an injury to the lungs. Remember, your first priority in an incident is to keep yourself from becoming a victim. Ammonia released from its containment may be invisible and will drift away downwind as it dissipates. In review, it is an inhalation hazard and can be deadly, producing chemical burns to the eyes, lungs, and skin. Stay upwind from an incident and only enter the area with proper personal protective equipment. Once you have identified that it is an ammonia incident and you are properly protected to handle the situation, the next priority is to secure the scene to minimize the potential injury to others. Since ammonia vapors travel with the wind, the immediate location must be secured, as well as the people downwind from any anhydrous ammonia release. If the release is large, dangerous concentrations of ammonia vapors can be found several kilometers away. Shelter in place is a vital technique for people in buildings downwind and should be considered in any response. Evacuation is also a valid technique, provided evacuation is not into a dangerous concentration of ammonia. Only those with specialized knowledge and training should be allowed to enter the restricted zone to help mitigate the release of ammonia and aid in the situation. Keep all other personnel out of the restricted zone. In review, remember, the main hazard in an ammonia incident is inhalation, either at the scene or downwind. The focus must be on keeping people out of those zones until the incident is controlled. Refer to the ERG, Table of Initial Isolation and Protective Action Distances. The inhalation hazard presented by ammonia means that rescue and mitigation be done by properly trained and equipped personnel. Canutech can provide information and advice on the product and contact information for emergency response personnel trained and equipped for dealing with ammonia emergencies. For ammonia used in agriculture, manufacturers provide expertise and emergency response capability. All agricultural operations have an emergency response plan. Emergency contact information should be available at the site or on the bill of lading for transportation incidents. In an incident where there is no release of ammonia, a perimeter must still be established since the product is stored under pressure and the integrity of the containment is not known. Ammonia-containing equipment should not be disturbed until expert help is available. Remember to check the wind direction when setting the perimeter. If possible, pre-planning with facilities that use ammonia is a key activity 
and can dramatically improve emergency response methods in an incident. This is especially true in smaller centers where hazmat expertise may be less readily available. In review, remember, mitigation of an anhydrous emergency should be left to properly trained and equipped personnel. First response should focus on securing the scene and initiating the emergency response plan. Ammonia is a commonly used agricultural fertilizer and industrial chemical. In small concentrations, it is not harmful, but in high concentrations, it can injure and kill. Ammonia is stored and transported under pressure as a liquid, but it turns into a gas on release. The main hazard of a release is inhalation. Rescue and mitigation is best left to properly trained and equipped personnel. Expert assistance is available from manufacturers and Canutech. Remember, focus on identifying the product, protecting yourself, securing the area, and obtaining expert assistance. As a first responder, you may be the first on scene of an emergency involving anhydrous ammonia. It is vital that you know what to do. We hope that this training DVD has given you that knowledge. If you wish to view more in-depth information on anhydrous ammonia, please view the additional tabs on the main menu of this DVD. You can also find information on ammonia on the Fertilizer Safety and Security Council website, www.fssc.ca, and at manufacturers' websites. For emergency responders seeking training on ammonia beyond the awareness level in this program, manufacturers can provide specific operations level training on request. <laughs>